Good morning, YouTubers and ARFCommers. This is KF7IJZ. And I'm out here today because I have finally finished version 2 of my solar generator. What you are looking at right now are four Goal Zero Boulder 15 panels. Um, each one of these panels is a 15 watt solar panel and uh, they sell clips that allow you to attach them to build arrays. <clears throat> these uh, panels have a, uh, a nice aluminum frame and then uh, tempered glass on the top. So they are water resistant and uh, meant for outdoor use. A little rugged, still glass and aluminum so I wouldn't throw them down a mountain or anything. Um, but quite handy and portable. I have them mounted on a camera tripod. This is a Bogan Manfrotto tripod that I've had from my photography days. Um, it was just something I had around. It's heavy duty. It's rated to hold, I think, up to 16 pounds, which I think my array weighs like 14. Um, so that's just what I'm using for this. Today, the weather is... There's some sun, but it's kind of cloudy. Um, sun's been going in and behind out of clouds. Hazy, I guess, maybe. But uh, not a 100% blue sky in Sunday, so we're not getting maximum output. And uh, I have discovered a few shortcomings with my setup already. And this is the first time I've had this actually out in a field. The... Um, I need to do something to be able to adjust the angle of how far back I can tilt the panels. Uh, if we move around to the back, another ham friend of mine fashioned for me using this aluminum channel as a mounting point, and then he built this mounting plate, which I don't know if you'll be able to see this. It just sits on top of the actual tripod head, and then we're using... Uh, these long nuts and these aluminum bars and wing nuts to uh, secure it on there. It's it's not going anywhere. I thought this would be an ideal situation because the tripod I had were three three axis control. Um, from a rotational standpoint, rotating very easy. But the problem that I have is the vertical, or I guess the tilt. Um, this is as far back as it goes, and I think I need to be able to get a little flatter than that. But, you know, that's why we do these things, to learn. Um, what comes built into the Goal Zero Boulder 15 panels are these little boxes. Um, each box has a cable that comes out of it, terminates to this bundle. I don't know, it's four or six feet of cable probably 24 gauge coax, um, so fairly small stuff. And then also on each one of these panels, see if you can see there where it says chain. These things are meant to be able to be chained together and you just run the cable from one, plug it into the other. So I have all four of these hooked up, so it's still giving me the 12 volt equivalent out. The uh, Because it's such small cabling and because at the end of the day, if you're at the last panel, you're running through almost 24 feet of cable. Quite a voltage drop, I assume. Uh, so I'm in the process of trying to make... I've ordered the plugs for the chaining ports, and I'm trying to shorten each one down to two feet that'll all converge on a central um, PowerPoint bus, or power, Anderson power pole bus that I'll mount here on this plate. But we haven't gotten there yet. I tried that last night, and it's really tiny soldering, and so I got frustrated. So that is the array. The, uh, these panels are great because they're relatively small. If I remember correctly, I think they're uh, 11 inches by like 18 or 19. Decent size. Um, these are available online. Best place I've seen them online is Amazon.com, although the place to buy these, if you have a Costco membership, uh, I'll add the link to the Goal Zero page where they show if there's going to be a road show. 
Um, but if you catch these at a Gold Zero Roadshow inside of a Costco, you can get them for $99, which is a good deal. Now, uh, one other thing I'll point out, these are monocrystalline panels, which are, with the current consumer technology, I believe the most efficient, um, at somewhere between 18 and 20. A um, little more resistant to heating than a polycrystalline or any of the other poured type. Um, one thing also, it kind of comes through the video. You'll see the panels on the bottom have a blue tint. The ones on the top have a black. These blue panels are about a year old. These are, I don't know, a couple months old. So obviously they've switched suppliers of the actual panels. Um, but in theory, that shouldn't actually matter at all. So the array by itself is all well and fine, but kind of useless. So what I did is I built a power box uh, for my amateur radio operations, and let's take a look at that. Per the recommendations of a ham forum that I'm a member of, I was introduced to the sportsman's box made by a company called MTM. Um, they're called Spud Boxes, which is the Sportsman's Plus Dry Box. This guy was $33 off Amazon. They make four versions. This is the next to largest. Um, I'll add a link to this as well uh, in the manufacturer site because I don't remember the dimensions offhand. But this box is a heavy-duty plastic. Um, it's water resistant it's not submersible but there is an o-ring around the main lid but a couple of unique things um, in addition to being heavy duty the first thing that I really liked was this lid you see this divider here I was able to install a West Mountain Radio rig runner a West Mountain Radio power check, and then I was able to install my power pole connections. Um, you'll see I have green and gray. Green and gray is my standard for anything related to solar or solar charging. So what we do, from goal zero I have a cable, a little adapter that connects from their proprietary 4.8 or 4.75 millimeter plug to Anderson power poles. Um, I have a what's up meter right now. You'll see that the uh, panel voltage is at 19 volts right now, but there's no load. So, come down here, and again, these uh, ports are for getting to the solar charge controller, which I'll show you in a moment. The red and black are for connection to the battery to run um, the power meter and the rig runner. So if I plug this in, you'll notice now that we have a load, I'm getting 42 watts off of what should be a 60 watt array, almost 3 amps of current, and it's uh, running, being drawn down to 14.97 volts. Now, so we're running at about two-thirds efficiency. Um, I blame some of that on, again, the small gauge cable of the array, some of the fact that uh, the sun is not 100% uh, out and strong today, and uh, some of it, my lack of being able to aim this properly. But the uh, idea behind this box was that I wanted to build a unit that I could basically run a 100 watt HF radio at field day without a generator. You get, uh, in the amateur radio world, we have a yearly exercise called field day, um, and it's designed for us to practice our emergency communications capabilities. I wanted to be able to run a station completely without a generator, even though I do have a Honda uh, two kilowatt generator, and uh, this was the setup I came up with. So that's the lid of the box. Uh, oh, one thing I'll add, I have two 20 amp hour batteries I got from Batteries Plus in the bottom of the box in parallel, giving me 40 amp hours of capability. Um, last night I ran the computerized battery analyzer on it, ran it down to 11.8 volts, which is where uh, our amateur radio stuff stops working, 
and found that I got 30 amp hours of usage at a one amp draw, which means I could run my radio on receive for 30 hours uh, just with the setup here without even replenishing the battery, which is quite good. Um, let's take a look inside. All right, so here's the interior of the box. Um, right now it's pretty spartan. What I have here is a Morningstar Sunsaver maximum power point tracking uh, charge controller. The left two connections are to the panel, and I have them running up to the green and gray power pole connections on the box. The middle two go to the battery, which I'll show you that down below. The two to the right of that are actually made to attach a load. Um, the reason that I'm not using that function right now is this thing is only rated for 15 amps. Uh, my the, the HF transceivers I use can draw up to 22 amps um, at 100 watts for something like CW or FM, um, which the batteries can handle, but the charge controller could not, so I had to bypass that, which is kind of a shame. Um, the other thing I have is this uh, Morningstar... Uh, remote meter, which this thing plugs into the charge controller via phone cable, basically, and it basically tells me, you know, what voltage is running, is the controller uh, loading the panels to. Right now, we're getting uh, over 3 amps, I don't know if you can see that, 3.15 amps of current to the battery, I believe, um, and then there's a quick gauge, a red, yellow, and green, that show you the health of the battery, which is also... Um, on here. The other nice thing is that if this were charging my load, it would cut disconnect the battery at 10.7 volts, which uh, sealed lead acid batteries, you don't want to discharge below um, 10.5. This tray came with the box and is removable, and down below are the two batteries. Now, one thing I still have to do is I do need to get a uh, some styrofoam or something to wedge those in a little better so they can't move around. But, um, all told, I am very happy with this project, and the best part is, is that, with the exception of the things coming out of here, I've, I've had to drill no holes in the actual box. So the box still is waterproof, or resistant, with that lid closed. Um... As I mentioned, I drained this thing down to 11.7 uh, volts or 11.8 volts for my test last night. I'm actually going to stay out here and see if I can get it recharged. And uh, we've been charging for, I don't know, about 40 minutes now. Um, we'll take a measurement here in a bit and see what the batteries are up to. So let me know if you have any questions. As always, I look forward to your comments. Uh, and hopefully there's something to be learned from all this. I will add links to everything that is in this box in the comments, and thanks for watching. Actually, I thought of a couple more things to add. Um, so as I pointed out, <clears throat> this is a maximum power point tracking solar uh, charger controller. Um, these are a, a bit more expensive. I, I This guy was over $100. I don't remember what I paid. I, like I said, I'll put that information in the comments. But the reason you want a maximum power point charge controller is it isolates your solar panels from the battery and what that ends up doing for you is it allows it to keep the panels you know solar panels want to be between 15 and 18 volts so it allows um, you to receive all the power off the things or off the panels at whatever amperage they can put out um, and of course volts times amps equals power it can then take the higher voltage and convert it down to the appropriate voltage for the batteries. And the result is you get more current into the batteries. If you buy a less expensive uh, charge controller, what it ends up doing is the battery is not isolated, so it actually pulls the voltage of the panels down to whatever the battery's at, and you have wasted uh, you have wasted power. I, there, I've seen some really good sites that explain what these do. Uh, so I'll probably try to include a link to that either in this part of the video or also in the comments. Um, but yeah, maximum power point uh, tracking charge controllers are the best way to get every ounce of power out of your solar array. Um, another couple things about this particular model is 
it can track, it has a temperature sensor built into it, a little guy, I don't know if you can see that, but it also allows you to hook up an external probe to connect to your batteries. Um, I think this thing is really expected to be a lot further from the batteries than what I have. Um, but what's neat is that in addition to being able to hook up the meter that I have, I can also have an interface, I can plug it into a computer. I think this thing will log 30 days of data, and you can download all that data and uh, graph it, and chart it if you're really, really, really interested in uh, tracking performance of your unit. Uh, one other thing I'll point out, you'll notice I have room in that tray, and of course I can throw cables or the WhatsApp meters, which are really one of the most indispensable tools you can have. Um, the batteries, you probably won't see this very well, I have a couple of fuse connectors that terminate to power poles, and then you'll see I have a power pole jumper running to the lid. Um, this just gives me flexibility to be able to disconnect that for whatever reason, or plug other things in. Um, now, also with that extra space, if I wanted to, um, there's plenty of room in there to install either a West Mountain Radio uh, Powergate PG40S, which is a it's a neat little device. It's basically a, a ham radio UPS. You plug a battery into one side of it. You plug a 13.8 uh, power supply into the other, and then it has a center tap output that goes to whatever, you know, directly to a radio or to a rig runner or whatever. Um, it'll act as a UPS because if you lose mains, it'll automatically switch your load over to the, uh, the battery, which is nice, but it also has a four-stage um, built-in charge controller. Um, so I could do that. I, the other thing that I have for this box, but it's not out here, is a uh, battery tender uh, marine version, which is waterproof. Um, and also outputs 5 amps, which makes uh, charging these guys pretty fast. The, um, the other thing I have, though, is I have a West Mountain Radio ISO Power, which is a unit that's designed to be an automotive battery isolator. So I could technically install that in here um, so that if I ever needed to charge this box off of a vehicle, I could. Uh, so I haven't decided yet if I'm going to install something permanently or, you know, I can just leave the boxes in here loose and use them if I need them. Uh, of course, normally with this, I would have a lot of jumper cables, um, different things uh, to hook my setup to. So, uh, again, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I've very much enjoyed building this. The first version of this box um, was just a Group 1 power box uh, sold at an auto parts store made to hold a 33 amp hour battery. Now, um, the biggest upgrade I made besides the boxes, I went from that battery because it just didn't conveniently fit inside the box I had chosen to use, but it was a 33 amp hour battery that I tested on a 1 amp draw down to 11.8 volts would give me about 22 amp hours of power. Um, like I said, moving up to 40 gave me 30, so that was, uh, that was an unexpected bonus, even though the batteries were more expensive than I would have liked. But anyway... Uh, take care, 73.